Yeah, hello and welcome for today's webinar. And as a special service to you, all these live webinars will be recorded. And for example, this seminar of today, you have a choice to download it and review this webinar until tomorrow because uh, I have to prepare the file and tomorrow we will have that here on this website on the DOC download area. So whenever you like, you can download this video file and have a review. Well, uh, let's go ahead and today's um, theme is of talking about special features and some nice functions on the GYHM600 and GYHM650 which could make your life uh, much easier doing the camera operation and some of them may be hidden for you or not known. Uh, the reason for that one mostly is that, for example, myself, this is the, the manual here, this is a 170 page uh, booklet and uh, myself, I'm not reading that all the time, so I normally play with the camcorder and then let's go ahead and see what's, what's going on, but sometimes you need it and I have to uh, have a review in. As you know, we do a certain amount of updates and new features will be added based on your feedbacks, etc. But it's impossible to add them in the handbook. The latest version of the handbook you can download on our website, tvcpro.eu and go to the support, type in the camera type and then you can have the latest instruction menu. Anyhow. Let's go ahead and look about the camera and let's talk about uh, the special features of today. Let me switch the image quickly so that we have a choice while well, doing this. You can see me on the corner and you can see the camera here in my front. So to today's issue is to talk about some special bottoms and features which is behind and this could you make your life really easy by the operation of this camera. You know, it had a huge kind of functions. Uh, some of the features are dedicated for the 650 because the IP based like live streaming etc that's it's or dual recording that is based on the 650 but all the rest is equal also for the 600. Let's focus on some dedicated buttons which we have this three here on top this additional three here that we call user buttons and especially these three up here has special functions which we call action bottoms. This is the action bottom number one and this is some action tools behind which you see later. But all of these six bottoms here you can do your own specific application behind. But that's not all. Here on the LCD display the most people don't recognize you have a cursor key here. The cursor key at the normal mode is menu and the cursor key is equal to this function here. This is the menu button and the cursor key. Well, this key is also selectable. So you can have dedicated features here on this bottom. This is very useful, which you see later. Another bottom is when we talk to put the camera around is this additional record button here. As you know, we have a lot of record buttons here on normal where the, where the hand grip is and we have it here in front. Due to your feedback, there are a lot of your people which you like to have here, not the record button, because some of you already used the Paris shoulder camcorder and you know what is in the front, it's normally the out to white bottom. Today the outer white bottom you find here is this tiny bottom. If you are not using the full outer white, you're doing manual operation and you want to calibrate the outer white, you push here. But some of you are missing, oh well, I know that from the ENG type shoulder type camcorder which is in the front. Don't worry, you can change this function of this bottom to your favorite outer white bottom. Very easy to do, I show you how to do it. Furthermore, we have some other bottoms, which comes important, which are these two bottom. One is the display bottom and one is the status bottom. Well, the display bottom, I give you a short impression why this is needed. I switch to the signal. Now you can see 
on top. This is what you see here on the LCD or on the viewfinder on the back. And this is an important button. When I press the display button, you can get the status information of your camcorder. And you press it again, you get additional information. For example, here on, on the top side, how, how long recording time you have, which kind of format you're go going to use to record, your audio level information, etc., etc., is inside display in your viewfinder. So we leave that on. And immediately we start with a uh, new function of, of, the, um, of the camcorder. There is a hidden button, brand new with the firmware update and the latest version of the firmware is 206 and I, how you do the firmware update, I talked the last uh, webinar, it's already for downloaded there, you can have a few how to do the firmware update. Anyhow, here's the bottom, it's called console bottom, which is normally operation, you press menu bottom, use the menu and then you can do console and go back out of the menu. Anyhow, this bottom gets a new dedicated function. Keep in mind you are somewhere around uh, during a shooting, let's say there's a press conference is running, you push your recording and then there's some reason you have to go out, whatever is needed, maybe a smoke or something else. <laughs> Anyhow, and you don't want and you want to lock the camcorder. There could be also other reasons, of course. So let's do press the console button and hold it. And after a certain amount of holding, all the functionality of the camera got to be locked. So when I press here, nothing happens. I can press here, nothing is operation. Only stop, record and stop is working. That's the only thing. And to unlock, you press it again and hold it for some seconds. So it means about 10 seconds and then it's everything unlocked and you can use it. How you get the information it's locked or not? Let's have a view to the, to the signal. And please look to the uh, top area here close to this first sign. You can see there is a power connector, AC power connector, so I'm using AC adapter here. So right, right uh, on this side you will find the information when it's getting locked. Now I press about 10 seconds and the unit gets locked. There is the sign, unit is locked so now I can press low loops here or some other function or even I can press the menu nothing is operate. So all the operation stops only recording you can start and you can stop the recording. To unlock Again, press the console button for about 10 seconds and then this going off and now you have function like low loops and all the other, it starts working. Well, let's, I move the camera around like here, so and I put a little bit, I put a little bit the camera, move the camera for you that you can follow up my operation here. Yes, let's go a little bit closer. Okay, here we go. I'll put the screen here a little bit bigger for you. Let's come to the special bottoms. You remember I talked about it, these bottoms here on top or even the side bottoms here and how we can manage that. Well, press menu and directly we are in the camera function area. Press OK. So now you have two choices. You can scroll down, but the function where I talk is on the end of the menu, so it's much easier when, I con when I, instead to go down, I go up, and immediately I'm at the user switch setting. Well, let's go to into the user switch settings. And you can find here is all our six user bottoms which we have which we can do dedicated application like the Lulux etc. Well it could be very interesting keep in mind you want to do live streaming on the 650 or you have the IP functionality and can do live streaming and live streaming is an operation which is fully independent so I can use the record bottom 
and I can use live stream and start live streaming whenever I like to start the live streaming and stop the live streaming whenever I want. So it's much easier when I take one of the user button, let's say the user button six, and I want to have the live streaming on and off. So you go on the user button six and scroll up and simply search your application which you want to use for this. Let's go up and we find live stream. That's it. So now the user bottom six, user bottom six is just the last bottom here. So if the camera is set up for live streaming, you not have to go to the menu anymore. Just press this bottom and live streaming going to happen. Well, that's easy usage also for other things. Let's have a look to uh, another feature. Let's do that on the user bottom number five. There is a special feature inside the camera which called clip cut trigger. Clip chuck uh, trigger is very useful in case you are on a, on a video co on a con conference and you're doing a recording and the recording is running and running and running so you get a very long file. If you have the time or like an event, like a music event, forever, one song is finished and you like to have several clips, not only one long clip. It's very easy. During the recording, you press record and you, you start the recording. And now I have the clip cutter there in the menu. Well, just to show it in the back. So I have the clip cutter then on the user button five. I press the user button five and the file will be split in a new file without any uh, loss of image information between file one and file two. So you not have to stop the recording. You not have to break the recording. Just let it run and just press clip cut trigger and it creates a new file. So then you can have step, file number one, file number two, event number one, event number two. It's much easier than later on for editing. That's a really, very nice feature which you have in between. Let's go a little bit down. Then you can see our favorite front record bottom, which I explained you before. Our front record bottom, which we find in front of the camera which we like to have like the old, uh, like the NG cameras to have auto white balance on this feature. Well, click on there and simply select auto white. And from now on, the front record bottom works as auto white bottom as usual, which you have on uh, the NG camera. Again, next feature. You can see this is the LCDs Cursor bottom. So this, this what it shows up down is exactly the bottom here. So let's do a nice new feature here on the left side, or on the right side from your point. Let's click in there, and there is a feature which you not find in a normal menu operation. It's called expanded focus. Here we are. Expanded focus. Well, I go out, out of the moves and we have this function by pressing the bottom to the left. Okay, go out. So what it happened? When I click, you see there is a word coming called expanded. You can see that also on the screen. But what does it mean? And you see it's only three seconds and after three seconds it falls off. To see what's going on, I do a, a little image on the camcorder. Well, I have some limit headroom here in my room, but anyway, I think it's understandable. So if you do a uh, focus adjustment, and keep in mind, autofocus is very nice, but auto automatic features have some limitation regarding the dynamic of the image, the, uh, the, the brightness of the image, room conditions, whatever. So sometimes it's needed that you do manual focus, and you want to do manual focus, this is a high resolution uh, screen of course and maybe have a wide angle image so let's uh, let's move a little bit let's move a little bit in front let's see doing focus here and you're doing the focusing you can use the auto focus assist or the, or the, the focus assist 
to do the focusing, but there is a nice feature we call this expanded focus. Let's see, see what happens. Can you see that on the screen now? It's a zoom up, a pixel by pixel, 1.5 times zoom up, just for three seconds and then it folds back. As you can see, it will not happen on the output. There is no change because this is not what I want. I do the recording and maybe correction of my focus and not want to record uh, that zoom up. This is only visible on the LCD. It's only visible here on the back on the view on the LCD viewfinder. So again, you press left, expand it. You get the message that you are in this mode and it folds back. Well, let me darken the screen again. On this item, you have also special setup. If we go back to the same settings, to the user switch settings, and now keep in mind we put we put this expanded focus on this key, right? Here is another special issue: when you scroll a little bit down in this user switch menu option, you find presettings, also presetting. For example, for the expanded focus. Example, limited time. So limited time means that the three seconds, the momentary is expanded focus is only in as long you hold the bottom to the right or the toggle mode. Let's do the toggle mode quickly and go out of the menu. Put the screen in. So you have some choice to see that. I just want to make a control here. Give me one second. Okay, everything fine. Everything visible. Fantastic. So let's push the bottom. It's expand and you can see it leaves in that situation. It's permanently expanded as long you push it again and then it's off. So you have these three choices, three seconds then it folds back momentary that means as long you hold it you have it or you switch it on and you switch it off so this is a very very nice nice feature let's go back to the same menu option camera function use a switch bottom let's go a little bit down for the presettings you can see you have a lot of presettings here especially for the low looks operation the low looks operation the low looks operation in this mode is a basic setting of 30 dbs the camera has two general shooting modes would we say standard or extended mode why this happens in the the camera performance have a light sensitivity of f12 at 2000 looks that's the full performance of the camera it starts from very very low light when you use the low looks you can start up from 0 0.4 looks that means if you are completely dark room you have a laptop open the light from the laptop can show the image the, the operator in front including color of course it's noisy because the gain is very high but it's perfectly if you go somewhere else as a video journalist in the field and uh, you never know what happens there in the dark, like an accident or whatever. Small light is enough to get images. Anyhow, the low looks at the moment is limited to 30 dB, but you have more headroom. In the case of the more headroom, you can switch here and you go to up to 36 dB. That is the maximum what you have. Keep in mind about the two shooting modes, shooting mode standard and extended. To get the full performance, the camera has to be in the extended mode. A couple of minutes later, I will come uh, a little bit more in detail to these two shooting modes. But first of all, let's have a look to other presettings which you found here. Clip preview for the last five seconds, or for the beginning, or for the total clip. You can have a spot meter. You can say maximum, minimum. You can say you want to see only maximum or you want only minimum or manual means you make a selection of the spot meter where you want. Uh, you have face detection. Face detection is a very, very interesting tool. Regarding autofocus is always a discussion. Some people say, well, it's 
uh, I want to have it quicker because I have fast moving object but then you have if you two persons between change the camera then the camera starts to moving because the automatic never knows what you personally want the back or the front on the other hand other people say well it's too fast I want to have it slower so there's always a discussion we're still doing improvement we listen to your input and we're changing for, for example the version 206 has also some improvement regarding the autofocus but this camera has for especially for the autofocus also a special feature it's called face detection and the face detection is here selectable only autofocus or with exposure with the image exposures you can do the presetting here and this face detection is a also a nice tool when you are in a conference have a lot of people there you get a cursor on the key I cannot show that here on the on the seminar because I need a group of people in front you can select one or dedicated person and the camera will focus will follow with the focus only on this person if you want to switch to another person simply push the key and you go to the another person and the camera keep that in focus of course it's an automatic means when the people in front starts to jump out of your screen well then is no choice to follow up anyhow to use this face detection you have to select that on the special key function you, you can select up the sensitivity and the reaction times etc what we call hysteresis auto exposure lock you can do you can do a preset zoom speed setting and the expanded focus we already talked let's uh, do a little bit uh, look to the um, spot meter and let's take one of the keys which we have let's do the um, let's say here we go into the left key and let's do there the special feature we called spot meter so now the spot meter is on and I switch to the camera body uh, let's do the output to go out of the menu here we go and let's do me a full screen of the of the camera here so here we are and let's do me a super expose well give me a second here we are yeah. and then you can see what happens so I open the camcorder you get an image let's do this and I use the cursor left key and now you can see I get two cursors into the screen the green one measurement the dark area and the yellow one measure the, uh, the, uh, the brightest point and this is depending how long you push the bottom if you do quickly it's on and off and if you hold it longer then it's going to selectable you find a part and then the camera automatically detects the brightest point and automatically detects the lowest point and gives you an information of the percent the dynamic range the maximum dynamic range is 400 percent of the total image so you can see it's running around so this is now automatic mode if you hold that for a part longer then the cursor key will be locked and you can have a fixed measurement it's depending on your pre setting and the same as the same here with the cursor key of course the same issue we can do the same issue we can do you see here the cursor is there the same issue we can do with the face detection then this kind of cursor will come into the face and lock it to my face to use this operation you can use this the cursor key at, at the top so well <coughs> Let me do the screen here again. So this was everything made with the cursor key left. If I hold it a little bit longer, you can change the mode. And if you press short time, you can switch that on and off. Well, this is our camera operation menu, which you see here. And maybe some of you say, oh, there's a lot of features, a lot of features. And I don't want to scroll all of these features, man. Well, it's there is a, another nice function, which we call favorite menu as you can see in all the functions which you have here you can see on the bottom let me do in front you can see user at really you see here on the screen user at here on the low end 
Well, let's say I want to have a dedicated function. Uh, let's go to our menu setting before. I think I have a good idea when we took the camera function here. Uh, let's take one of these ones, say, use a switch. Let's say we want to have this function of clip trigger. We want to have in the favorite menu simple press the user one button. The user one button is we call action button in front. It's always this button here. So I press it and it says add and I say OK and now it's added. What does it mean? Well, let me turn the full side screen from the camera. This is what you daily do. I go off. This is your normal camera image. You press menu. You're coming into the camera menu. There is a trick. If you hold, if you're in this menu and you hold the menu button for a little longer, you're coming in the favorite menu. And more or less all of the features which you want to have, you can make your private menu. So you don't have to follow up all these issues. Make your own private menu with your favorites which you really use day by day. So when I press menu again, you see I go off, I press menu again, I'm back in the favorite menu. So you don't see the system menu anymore. If you want to see the system menu back, you simply hold the menu button and then you're back. It's very nicely, very easy for you to do this private menu option. Well, let's have a look to a dedicated function in the camera which we find under the camera process and this is very very important well this under this camera process and you scroll down we coming to the shooting modes which i explained before let's have a look to that here is the shooting mode we have two modes one is standard and one is extended why this is the well, I talked about the performance F12 light sensitivity at 2000 looks. Maybe sometimes you go on a web, you found that is mentioned F11. This is for the US area. US area have 60 hertz and the integration time is shorter. So that means the light sensitivity is one F stop down. In uh, European area, we have 50 hertz integration on the sensor is longer. That's why it's more light sensitive. But to get the, we found out that we can do better performance of the camera with better adjustment, like camera noise settings, noise level, etc., and even the iris control is better when we reduce, when you have a good light condition, like studio light conditions, a bright light, like sun is shining, whatever, you can have more performance from the camera when you use this standard mode. In case of the standard mode, the light sensitivity maximum is around about f8, f9. But the whole performance of the camera is better. So if you are a video journalist and you go in the late afternoon, you know that the light goes down, you go to sunset or even in the dark, switch the camera to the extended mode and you have the full performance including low looks and whatever. Keep this in mind. And as you learned before, it's in the menu and you have seen how I scroll it. It's much easier. You put it to the private menu, press add one, edit, and now it's in your private folder. So you don't have to be worried to scroll all to the menu items. So why this iris comes important? Well, as you know, normally we say the optimum image quality is around about two F stops, which is around uh, 4.6 to 2, 5.6 to iris level but uh, in, and this is a physical issue the iris is going close close and gets a smaller hole and smaller it, it likes and more light it comes and less light goes to the sensor so what could happen if you make a shot from the inside room to the outside area the light is too bright and when it's too bright you lost dynamic and it gets a little bit unsharp because of the dynamic loss and lens diffraction issue. Anyhow, we want not to stop such function. 
on sometimes on some cameras they're going to cut the iris you immediately you, you make a smooth transition from inside to the outside and suddenly the image is dark that is what we not want to do we think you can live that with the less dynamic but it's a learning process to input the ND filter and this is depending on the people somebody says well I don't want to use the ND filter I like more to use the electronic shutter instead whatever you like but at a certain amount of light you have to reduce the incoming light in some ways. Even the integration gets faster, so you, the integration kind of shorter on the sensor and less light is respective uh, picked up, or you use the ND filter in front. Well, you need some information for that one, and that's why we modified the, uh, the software, and this is from the previous versions. And when we go back to the image information, uh, and let me superimpose quickly this image. So uh, with my face, and I can give you an explanation. You see now here is there is written close in that area, so I can open and you can see the f stops here. However, we have another bright light. It's getting too dark outside. If you are in the sunset, what we do is if the light gets on f. 11 because this is the critical phase to lots, lots of dynamic and the image get washed out so we make here a, uh, the image the information here will be get gray so you get a gray color behind uh, behind and gives you the message please put ND filter in well it is a discussion some of some of your says well could we not have like the expanded before could we not have a big message here please input shutter well, I'm not against this, and I think uh, maybe for the beginning it's okay, but keep in mind, it's just a simple learning procedure. By the daily use of this camera, such a big information here will be disturbed you. At the beginning it's fine, it says, well, put the shutter in, put the shutter in. And, and then you say, and I, don't, I won't see the image, I don't want to put the shadow in, I want the image like it is, whatever, and the message, the message here on this, on this area is still enough. Yeah? So there's no disturbance. Well, there's a discussion. You can say, well, you have so many functions, maybe it could be switch off and on. Yes, you're right, but always, there are always there's also some limits we put so many things in that camera for you you know in FTP uh, on the IP base we put the the, uh, the clip cutting in uh, you have an editor and you can do the live streaming you have dual encoding uh, you have different kind of backups recording all this needs of course some uh, resources and somewhere it's limited and we think to make a big message here say please put chat in well it's, it's a discussion point, of course. Instead, we make it here with the gray. So take a little bit attention by the daily use. Once you have learned it, once you have done it uh, several times, then you, I think there will be no discussion anymore that you want to have a big message here inside the screen. Anyway, well, good. Let's go to the, to the next point. Upside. <coughs> Let's go to the to the next uh, the next features and let me put in the camera, camera here again. So when we go to the uh, camera operation, I want to come to uh, another process information. Here is a nice feature inside the camera, which we call white dynamic range. Well, the white uh, dynamic range is very useful when you're going to in a museum or any arts and you typically know that there are objects with a bright light on top and then you're shooting with the camera and you, you do the adjustments or you set up the iris but uh, you get a nice image of the object but the rest is too dark because of very high peak light or maybe white objects. 
So anyhow, in this case, you have a good choice to use this white dynamic range. And you do the experience with that. Such operation is very nice. You can do get excellent image for this one. And you get also the surroundings in a good condition. So if you have a choice, and also here, uh, you're going in somewhere, like in a museum, please try this white dynamic range. And also, that could be maybe someday, if you're doing such shootings, a favorite point, simply add it to the favorite menu, and then later on you have that. Well, we have all these settings, and of course, when you do all these settings, maybe there comes a day you want to have that stored somewhere. You go to the system, no, sorry, to the system, and we go to setup files, and let's say you store setup files you find two groups of file setting. The picture files and the scene files. Well, let's make it easy to understand what is the difference between these two. The picture file. Picture files stores everything which you have under the process menu. That means everything what you have in here, you have adjusted. This is stored under the pixel, under the picture file. So it described your image settings. And um, the scene file, and the scene file, and the scene file stores your complete setting, including the picture information. That means everything what you set up on the, on the camcorder, which kind of recording format, uh, and standard mode, extended mode, and everything you store it. You have two choices. One, you store it on the internal memory, or you make a selection on the SD card, A or slot B. So you can do a lot of kind of setups for your camcorder. So once you have the right one, I prefer normally not to use a regular SD card where I do my record on it, I prefer to use a total separate SD card, put it in, store the setup, make a note on the SD card and say this is my master SD card and put it somewhere on the site and whatever you play around you want to have backup for the old settings you can load it back into the camera and you have back your old settings. Well, but it's up to you how you handle this. But keep in mind you can store all these settings. When we have all these items for, for setting up, <coughs> more or less sometimes audio comes totally in the background, especially when we talk video and camera operation. I want to show you a little bit about the audio section. Well, the, the audio on the camcorder, <coughs> let's do here the side, you have all these items here. That's a standard which you are use, normally use in your daily operation. Select which kind of input, internal microphone, which is here built in, or an external where we have on the other side, we have our XLR with phantom power, without phantom power, your volumes, whatever. But <coughs> there is an important issue. You know, the camera has a lot of performance, whatever, and you have the, the noise which you get here. I think if you are using professionally, you will use an external microphone. In case of the external microphone, which you can use here, and you have the connection here, there is an additional connection, and I would like to show you here. This is right, right here on the box there. We can open this, and it's called auxiliary input. This auxiliary input is a nice separate audio input. Of course, when you use this, the internal microphone will be switched off, and you can see here some holes which we have here. There is the mounting plate. This is an uh, accessories, is an optional accessories for a wireless microphone receiver. And it's very interesting for the uh, video j video uh, journalists. Uh, we have a wire wireless microphone, and normally you know where to, to put it on here on top, put it somewhere with with tapes on the side. But here is a nice mounting area. You get an adapter plate from our side and the audio, you have a separate audio input here. This switch off the internal mic, you can use the wi wireless and you can do additional microphones here on your, on your XLRs. 
Well, furthermore, there is a lot of setup features inside uh, for the audio part. And when we look into this audio, you can select your reference levels. You can see the internal microphone gain. You can rise it up or bring it down. The reference level, the limiters, monitors, and also the EGC response time. Well, this is also a discussion, same as autofocus for automatic mode. Keep in mind, if you are in a quiet room, like in a museum, whatever, in a church or something else, your EGC will rise up when you get pick up every noise. Maybe you don't want it. I always prefer, if you are a professional user, or wedding photograph or whatever, use a manual operation is in this time. And you have the nice indication on the camera of your audio levels and you have much more control. Same, for example, at the wedding photographers, you have the music, you stay with your cameras beside the loudspeaker and it's so heavy loud and it's get overdue and sometimes it's a big bang or something else and then there's maybe uh, for a, uh, a second or two you have no audio because AGC is dropping completely down. But anyhow, you can do adjustment on the HSC response time. Well, there's much more. There's, a, first of all, a test tone in the beginning, but there is also wind cuts, electronic wind cuts, which helps you a lot when you are outside and get wind noise uh, information. But here, the thumb thing is very unique. If you use on the camera and a and headphone, you have an audio equalizer which is influenced not by the playback, it's influenced during recording. So you can really adjust your audio, especially what I explained to you before as a wedding photographer, you have music uh, right beside, on beside, and maybe the bass is too much or the high volume level of the day, high frequency level is too high because the flute is playing or something. So really you can do adjustments here. The most people don't know it, they're not going into this menu item. It's a real big benefit for you to use these additional audio features. Well, that's for the quick setting for the audio. For the recording, let's have a, a, a some cue to the recording. Let's go to system. Let's go to the recording recording format. Well, here a short explanation to this system setups. As you can see here on the screen, we have HD, SD, HD, and plus SD, and HD plus web. Well, this is uh, a little bit dedicated for the uh, user which use a GYHM650 because GYHM650 has, uh, let me do a little bit the, the screen here now. <coughs> Show you quickly the back side of the camcorder here we have in front. You know, the 650 have two slots, slot A and slot B. So two SD cards, which also the 600 has, but the 650 have dual encoding. That means we have two processors inside the camcorder. Well, with these two processors, we are able to record different kind of formats, like HD plus SD. So you have total independent system, one in a high quality in, a, in HD or in high quality SD, or you can use HD plus web. Web means it's a format. It's not for the internet, but it's from the resolution point of view, a good size for the internet, like so 480 pixels or half HD resolution, which is 960 pixels. So these two formats are very nicely works if you want to use that on the internet, like for iPad or any tablet operation. Also, there is a new choice with the firmware update. You can use uh, HD uh, ABC HD format with uh, 40 40 pixels resolution. So it's another HD. So you can run here MXF, for example, on the card A, on the card B. You can run ABC HD format. But this has nothing to do with uh, live streaming. Live streaming is a next issue for next week. But uh, just as a pre-information from you, if you want to do live streaming, the camera has to be set to SD or HD. Not as the most people starting with the beginning and set up to HD plus web, because they say streaming, streaming is something like web, 
but this is not the case in this issue. WAP means only different recording format in a small hot size. For doing live streaming on the 650, we have to set up HD RST, but this is a private for the next week. Well, we have also different kind of recording formats, pre-recording, clip condition, etc., etc., etc. At the end, I want to say we have also the slot mode, which says we want to have series, which is continuous recording. We want to have dual, that means recording at the same time, the same format. That is also possible. And we have backup. And backup is a, a, an interesting thing, because if you're doing a backup, what is the difference between backup and dual? Well, dual basically is the same. You create automatically a backup. But the backup is for the people who say, well, I'm, let's say, in a conference and there is some normal, let's say, some speech which may be interested, but not highly interested. You don't want to waste both memory space on the SD card. So you only like to use the backup when it's necessary. In this camera, you learn before about the user switch settings. You can go now back to the user switch setting, set up the camera to the backup mode, and can select, for example, the bottom number six as an additional backup trigger button. That means I do the shooting, standard shooting, and when some important issue happens and then you want to have the backup, you press this additional button. Let's say the user button number five, I press it, and then it's going into backup. That means on the second card, it's, it's then a, basically a dual mode, but you can stop it whenever you want, just the backup, and the other one is during a recording normally. So it's also a quite nice feature for such kind of operation. Or you see during an event, like music or whatever, say, oh, there comes a dedicated uh, actor and you want to record, make sure that everything you really have in your camcorder, nothing happens to the card, whatever, even the SD card is very, very secure. Whatever reason, you maybe feel better. It's very important because it's your job, it's your business, your money, whatever. You can, press, you can push the backup and then you have, on the second card, you have automatically a backup feature. So again, Keep in mind, all these items are mainly adjusted by the user switch setting. Go in that, select what you want, mark trigger. You see there is the backup trigger, so you can select it. Clip review, load picture file, etc. Zoom speed. There is a lot of features which you can use the user buttons. And by the way, as you remember, we use the favorite menu press menu, hold the menu bottom again, and you can see I put the favorite issue in, like the clip trigger, the shooting mode, very easy to go there, the shooting mode now, do extended mode, so I not have to go to the normal standard operation, very, very useful. So, well, there's much more, time is rising, and normally we take uh, about 30 to 45 minutes, already it's 45 minutes over, and I guess, I hope, that I could give you uh, a lot of side information for new features. Next week, uh, we're talking about streaming in, 30, in around about 30, 45 minutes for the streaming. Of course, we have some, during such a seminar, is of course a little bit limited for the demonstration, but uh, I'll do my best to give you some hints and tricks how to do. Well, we have our chat room. Uh, I will have uh, now a look if somebody have some questions. Or we have uh, on this uh, training web page, there is also the telephone number. Now you have a choice to give me a ring here directly into this room, the number you find on this website. Uh, on the other way, this seminar is recorded and keep that in the DOC download from tomorrow. If there's nothing more, I wish you a nice evening and God bless you. See you next time, next week, same time, 3 o'clock p.m. German time. Bye-bye.